Hello and welcome to this first video in a new series that we will be producing which is going to be demonstrating the key functionality, the key workflows of the new Honeybee PH plugin for the Ladybug Tools Toolkit for those of us who are working on woofy passive energy models. So this entire series is going to be dedicated to explaining and demonstrating in quite a bit of depth how to use this new Honeybee PH toolkit to model a complete building from a blank rhino scene up to a completed woofy passive model. Now this series is really geared towards new users, folks who have not worked with um, either the Honeybee PH toolkit or perhaps even Rhino or Grasshopper that extensively. And so we're going to start from the beginning and talk through all the different steps that you might undertake if you are looking to build up a complete woofy passive model using the Honeybee PH toolkit. In order to keep this video series uh, relatively straightforward and in order to focus most of our attention on the actual Honeybee PH tools themselves, we are going to be modeling a relatively small single family home. So I know for a lot of you who are using Woofy Passive, you might take a look at this and say, well, I'm working on big multifamily buildings. This type of thing isn't going to have much relevance to me. We will be producing some more complicated, in-depth, multifamily, non-residential videos in the future. But just to get everybody on the same page with the tool usage, we didn't want to start with an overly complicated building. And so we're going to start with a very, very simple building build up our knowledge of how to utilize tools like Rhino, Grasshopper, and Honeybee, and of course Honeybee PH in quite a bit of depth, and then that'll serve as a really good springboard for looking at more complicated non-residential, multifamily residential projects in the future. So what are we going to be modeling as we get into this course? Um, well, before we take a look at that, uh, just briefly, um, if you haven't already, uh, definitely take a look at the video that we recorded around the installation, the downloading and the installation of the Honeybee PH Toolkit. Um, if you haven't already watched that, you should be able to see a link to that in the either in the description of this video or in the playlist that you're watching this on. Um, definitely take a look at that one. And um, just super briefly, um, you can see here at the PassiveHouseTools.com website, there is a button down in the bottom for Honeybee PH. I'll just come over here, and if we come in and click on Honeybee PH, it'll take you to the Honeybee PH website, where you can see there's a big button right here that'll allow you to download Honeybee PH installer, and that'll get you all set up on your system. If you do have any trouble at all, there is a contact link up here on the right hand side and there's also a whole page dedicated to common installation questions. So hopefully that's relatively straightforward. Hopefully everybody's got Honeybee PH installed on their system and working at this point. So I'll close this window. And now let's take a look at the sample building that we're going to model as we start working our way through this course. Um, you will find a link to these source files um, that we're going to be using. Um, if you do want to follow along, let me make this a little bit bigger. Our source files here. Um, if you do want to follow along, there's going to be a whole bevy of source files that uh, I'll be using throughout these videos. If you have watched any of our other videos around either the IDF to pH, LBT to pH, um, some of our design pH uh, courses, you'll be familiar with this building. It's our, sa our very simple uh, single family home, two stories, uh, residential project. Um, and so you'll find the CAD and some specifications, some assembly drawings, things that we'll reference as we go through this video. And so you'll be able to find the link to these downloads if you do want to utilize these. You certainly don't have to. There's nothing here that you can't do yourself in your own uh, Rhino uh, scene. Um, but if you do want these, they are, of course, available. But just briefly, let's take a look. I'm going to go in here to CAD, and let's just load up the drawing set. This is just a PDF version of the drawing set, um, which will allow us to just take a quick look at the sort of scale and scope and style of the building that we're going to be uh, uh, building out together here and getting to Woofy Passive. We're getting into Woofy Passive. So this is the building, the first floor of the building, simple rectangular volume. You can see there's just a small entry on the left-hand side, mechanical room, open living and kitchen, um, a den slash guest bedroom on the right-hand side, a single bathroom, and then there's a second floor here with a open to below space and a, a couple bedrooms, another bathroom on the upper story there. 
So very straightforward, very, very simple when it comes to the geometry and the massing north side, um, east side, you can see we've got some elevations here with some information about the windows, the placement of the windows, size of the windows, operation of the windows, um, south side here with some um, uh, overhangs and certainly more glazed on the south side, the sort of southern orientation. So this building um, designed for a northern hemisphere, cold climate, you see very thick walls, um, uh, etc in, in this building so we'll have plenty of, of time to really get to know this building as we as we get into it but you can just see here preview a very very simple straightforward geometry and again that's really designed to allow us to focus focus most of our attention on the honeybee ph tools themselves rather than getting lost in complicated geometry or modeling Alrighty, so with that out of the way let's jump right in the very first step of this sequence um, is going to be to get all of this CAD geometry that we're looking at right now into our Rhino scene. So the first thing we want to do is get all this data into Rhino, and that's going to allow us to then build up the geometry, the massing of our building for our Honeybee pH model. And we'll look at the simple workflow. We'll get this working, get our, our uh, information moving through into Woofy Passive, and then, of course, in future videos, we'll start refining and adding a lot more detail to this as we go. But our very first step, let's just um, close this and let's get ourselves into Rhino and start getting all of this data. You see here we've got a whole series of CAD files. So we've got a whole bunch of CAD files, DXF files, um, and let's get these into Rhino. So the very first step, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to come into my toolbar. Uh, I should note also I have increased the resolution here. Things might look a little weird, um, but I've increased the resolution on the video here to try and make it um, a little bit more accessible, make it a little easier to read some of the text. Um, so we're not going to have a lot of screen real estate, but we'll, we'll make it work. But hopefully it is visible for those of you watching on smaller devices, smaller screens. In any event, I'm going to come in here, I'm going to go to Rhino, and I'm actually going to use Run as administrator. Uh, I You don't have to do that for, for your own system. Um, I'm working on a Mac, uh, a Mac computer, and um, so it works better if I, I'm in parallels right now, so it works better if I run it that way. I'm going to come in here to my templates. We're going to make a brand new blank Rhino file. So I'm going to come in here, I'm going to say large objects, and let's use inches as our unit. So this tutorial series is going to be designed for those of you working in the US. Um, uh, most folks who are going to be using Woofy Passive um, uh, are going to be working to something like the Passive House Institute US protocol. Um, and so this uh, tutorial series is really going to be geared towards those of us working in the US using inch pound units. Um, so we will start out with an inch pound template here, and then we'll start importing. Uh, we'll, we'll look at where we might have to enter values or where we have the option to enter values in other units and how we handle the units question as we sort of get into it. Alrighty, so I've got my brand new Rhino scene here. You can see it's just a blank Rhino scene, so nothing at all in the scene here. We are using inches, so we can confirm that by coming up to our command palette here and just typing units. And that'll bring up the units, and you can see here that we are using inches, and we have an absolute tolerance of 0 0.01, so one-tenth of an inch. Or, excuse me, one one-hundredth of an inch. Um, and so let's see so the very well there's a couple different ways we can do this um, we can either come over here and grab our CAD and we can just drag it into our scene um, we could also maybe do it the more proper way come up here to file and go to import and then from import we can select the CAD file that we want to bring in so I've got a series of CAD files here I've got plans I've got some elevations, I've got a section here, so let's just bring these in one at a time. So I'll just select Plan 01 to start with, and click down here where it says Open. Uh, it's going to ask me some information, and here we have the opportunity to put in our model units. Um, if you are going to be importing um, CAD drawings, which are drawn in a different unit system, you have the opportunity to do that kind of automatic conversion here. This is all just straightforward Rhino stuff, right? None of this really has to do with Honey BPH, but we do want to show all the, the actual steps that a professional passive house consultant would have to go through if they want to utilize this tool to actually execute a, a full model. So you have the option here to import or put in the units of the CAD file. Uh, in our case, they just happen to be inches, so I'll just say OK. And there we go. There's our double click on this top view <clears throat> and there's our our new geometry brought in so you can see here it's, this is just flat CAD geometry if I go back to my perspective view you'll see that it's just flat CAD geometry all right so the first thing that we want to do with this is I want to grab all of this I want to come up here to my command palette 
and I'm going to type group, G-R-O-U-P, and hit enter, and that allows me to group all these lines together. Now if I select anywhere, I can grab them all and move the whole thing together as one unit. We could also put these onto a new layer. Um, we'll talk a lot as we go through this about you know, proper file management, layer management, keeping things tidy, manageable. You know, a lot of our work as Pestos Consultants is about data management, information management, and part of that is you know, keeping things tidy as you work. So the very first thing we want to do here is move this to a new layer. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come in, I'm going to make a new series of layers. I'm going to make a new layer called OOCAD, and then I'll make a new sub-layer by right-clicking and come over here. So I, so I right-click and then come down here and say new sub-layer. And let's call this plans. Let's make this a little bigger so that we can see what we're up to here. And now I'll select this. I'll come into my properties, and then I will choose layer, and I'll move it to plans. So now all of this geometry, this group and this geometry, are on the plans layer, and the plans layer is hosted in CAD. So I can turn this on and turn this off. allows me to manage it. I'll go ahead and just clean up these other layers. I don't need these layers. These aren't doing anything. Let's just get them out of our scene there. They're just cluttering up the space. All right, so I got my first plan in, and I put it, I grouped it so that I can manage it properly, and then I put it on the right layer. Let's do the same thing with our next plan. So I'm going to come up here to File, come down to Import, and I'll select Plan 02 this time. I'll hit Open again, do the same thing. We'll say Inches, say OK. Here's our new one. Notice that it's all selected by default when it comes in, so I'm just going to come up here to my, cran my command line and type Group, hit Enter. That's going to group all of this, and then we'll do the same thing. We'll come over here to our uh, Properties, come down to Layers, and move it onto the plans layer. Go take this, I'll move this off to the side as well. And then lastly, for our first section here, I'm gonna come up to file and come to import and just bring in the section. So let's just bring in the section, hit open. Again, this is gonna be inches, hit okay. Here's our section. We should uh, group it, again, to keep things tidy, say group. And now I'm gonna make a new sub layer. So I come over here to CAD, I right click, Come down here and say new sub layer, and let's call this sections. And I've got it selected here, so I go into properties, I come over here, and then I'm just going to select sections from the drop down. Let's go ahead and delete this zero layer as well. Again, clean up after ourselves. So I've got this one set of CAD geometry on sections, and then I've got another set of geometry here on plans, and then a third on plans as well. Let's not worry about the uh, elevations just yet. We don't really need those right now. Um, we'll get into those when we get into shading and windows, but for now let's just um, get our, our basics set up here. So I've got everything in my scene. I'm going to double click on top and I'm going to uh, maximize my, v my window here. Uh, and if you notice, I'm going to double click on perspective. If you notice, as I said, everything is just flat. CAD. So right now everything's just laying on the default world construction plane. So we need to start turning this into an actual 3D model. Now there's a million ways to make Rhino models. I'm just showing you one method that works well for a simple building like this using this type of CAD geometry as the underlay. So the first thing that we'll do is just grab our section here. And what I want to do is rotate this so that it's standing up. And that's relatively straightforward. I've got my gumball on. Notice that I've got this little widget here, which has a red and a blue and a green axis, allows me to move the geometry around and also allows me to rotate the geometry using these guys here. If you don't have the gumball on, you can come down here and turn on and turn off that, what, what Rhino calls the gumball. So I like to have it on. I also like to have on my ortho snap, so my orthogonal snap, and that's going to help us a lot um, with a building like this which is primarily orthogonal. Um, most things are going to be at 90 degrees in a building like this. So I'm going to keep my ortho on, I'm going to keep my gumball on, and that's going to help me model here. So I'm going to come into my scene, I'm going to select my section, I'm going to zoom in a little bit, and I'm going to grab, I'm going to hover my mouse over this red axis, I'm going to left click, and just drag until I feel the section snap into a vertical position. And it'll snap into a vertical position because I have this ortho snap on. If I didn't have this ortho snap on, let me control Z to undo, turn this off. If I don't do that, notice that I have a lot more freedom in where I can rotate this to, but it's also a lot harder for me to get to a perfect 90 degrees. Notice down here, 
I can see the actual angle that I'm rotating and I want to get to 90 but it's quite difficult without that ortho snap on so I'm going to do this control Z to undo turn my ortho snap back on and just move this up into position now notice the other thing about our section here we our building is kind of long and narrow this direction so this section is actually pointing the wrong direction so I need to rotate this by 90 degrees I'm going to kind of uh, move myself into position above it notice here I've got this green this blue axis that shows up so I'll grab that and I'll move my mouse again until I feel the section snap into position and again that's primarily because I have this ortho snap on so now our section is getting a little bit closer to our wall here. We want to start to position things relative to uh, one another in the right spot. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to take this and I want to move this section so that it's aligned to my floor plans here. So there's a bunch of different ways that we could do that. I'm going to just grab, come in here, zoom in. I'm going to um, grab one um, uh, corner position and just move the section based on that corner position. So I'm going to come up here to my command line. I'm going to type move and hit enter. And now notice that it's asking me for a point to move from. So I'm going to hover my mouse here until I feel it snap at this corner. Again, you can kind of see it snap as it gets a little co closer. If you're not feeling snap, you might have to come down here and turn on your object snaps. Uh, so you want to turn on the object snaps and I'm going to left click once. And now that's my anchor point. So now I'm able to move this geometry around using that point as the reference. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come over here to my floor plan and I'm going to get close to this corner and notice how it snaps into position once, once my mouse is pretty close. And again, that's because I have my object snaps on here. So I'm just going to come in here. I'm going to left click one more time. And there we go. Now we've got our section lined up to our floor plan. And if you need to try that again, you know, kind of move it around, um, you know, you can move these things around all day, every day. It's not going to hurt anything. Um, you can sort of move everything into, into position. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to set the right position for our floor plans in the Z dimension, the, the vertical dimension. So let me grab this blue and I'm just going to move this down. So I just moved it down in space. So what I like to do, and again, this, there's no right or wrong way to do this. This is just one way to do it. What I like to do is take this floor plan and align it to this edge right here. So I like to line it up to the top of my floors, the top of finished floor. So there's a couple, there's an, a really easy way to do that. I'm just going to come in and select my floor plan. I'm going to type in move. I'm going to select an anchor point. So here I'm going to select an anchor point on the section. Just click. Um, but before I click, I'm going to come up here and I'm going to say vertical. So I can either click this where it says vertical or I could type the letter V. And now what's going to happen is I'm going to select my anchor point, my starting move point. And as I move my mouse around, notice that the movement is constrained, is locked in the Z direction. I can only move this up or down because I've said to Rhino, I want you to constrain this to the vertical axis only. And so now if I come over here and I, I sort of hover my mouse, I can feel it snap into position around any of these. But I know that I'm not moving it to the left or right. I can only ever move it up or down because I said so. Because when I said, and I'll come over here and do the same thing again, grab this section, I'll type M for move. So I don't have to actually type out move. I can just type M and then hit the space bar or enter on my keyboard. I will... Uh, Instead of clicking this in here, I'll, I'll type in the letter V. I'll just type in the letter V, hit spacebar again, or enter. And now I've done the same thing. I can click and then move this around. But no matter where I move my mouse, I'm only moving this floor plan in the vertical dimension. So I'm not moving it left or right. I know that I'm constrained in that respect. And so I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to hover over um, this uh, top of this floor. And I'm going to move this in the Z dimension up to the top of the second floor. So we're pretty close now. The next thing we need to do is just align these two floor plans. And I'll kind of do the same thing. What I'm going to come in here is I'm going to I'm going to move this corner so that it aligns to this corner. But I, I, in this case, I don't want to move in the Z dimension and up and down. I just want to move to the right. So there's an easy way to do that. I'm going to say M. I'm going to type M and hit spacebar. I'm going to select my reference point. And now notice that I can kind of move this in any direction. And if I turn off my, excuse me, turn off my ortho, I can actually move it basically anywhere. Well, I don't really want that. I, I kind of want to just move it to the right. 
So what we can do now is we can start moving it one direction or another. And notice that Rhino kind of snaps us because we have ortho on. It's going to kind of snap us. And if I, I say, well, I actually want to lock it on this axis, the, easy, the movement on this axis, the easiest thing to do is hit the tab key on your keyboard. And now I've locked my movement into just this axis. And no matter where I move my mouse or where I snap to, the movement is only going to be in the left and right dimension. So these snaps, these toggles and snaps and, and Rhino tools are very, very important, very useful to get familiar with if you're going to start using Rhino to build up your passive house models. In any event, I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to hover over this corner. And once those are aligned, I'm going to left click again. And there we go. Notice that everything appears lined up. One uh, thing we can do if you're uh, rotation is being a little bit weird is just select everything come up here and type zoom and just uh, click selected and that resets the camera and resets the orbit so that we're now orbiting around our, our project uh, uh, here all right so it looks like our section and our floor plans are lined up the last thing that I like to do is just put everything uh, basically at the world origin zero zero um, you don't have to do that it doesn't really matter but it's gonna make things a little bit easier if things are, are mostly um, aligned or uh, near the world zero zero you can see world zero zero is over here at this um, intersection point so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here I'm gonna select everything so I've got everything selected and I'm going to type M again. So for move, it's going to say, where do you want? Where's your reference point? So I'm going to say, this is my reference point. But instead of clicking with the mouse now, I'm just going to type in 0, comma, 0, comma, 0. 0 in the X, 0 in the Y, 0 in the Z. And when I'm happy with that, I'm just going to hit the Enter key. I didn't click anything with my mouse. And if I zoom out a little bit, notice now our, our model is now placed on this 0, 0, 0. So the model's in just the right position at this point. Um, uh, again, we can, if we want to, we can hit Z for zoom and then S for selected, and that'll reset our camera and our rotation if you're feeling like things are kind of rotating about a weird point on your, on your model there. All right, so we've got all of our CAD in mostly the right place. At this point, what we can do is actually start building up our geometry, and we'll get this really quickly into a woofy model. So very, very quickly, we can build a, it's going to be very simple, but it will be a, a quick woofy model. So let's build some geometry. So I'm going to come over here to my layer palette, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say new layer, and I'm going to call this 01, and you call it whatever you want. I'm going to call mine geometry. I'm going to set that as the active layer, so I'm now working on that layer. And I'm just going to build two quick masses. So our building here is just a rectangle. Uh, we'll deal with the roof uh, in a little bit, but the thermal envelope of the building is just a rectangle. So I'm going to come over here. There's lots of ways you can build geometry in Grasshopper, but for, or excuse me, in Rhino, but for something like this, it's going to be easy enough for us to just work uh, using uh, a box tool like this. So the box, I can grab my box. I'm going to turn off the section for just a second. And I'll come over here and I will click once. I will click again. And now notice that I'm at being asked to provide a, or asked for a Z height. I can make the Z height pretty much whatever I want, but let's do this. I'll turn my um, section back on and I'm going to extrude the Z to like the center of the floor slab, the center of the floor slab there. Maybe it, maybe it makes more sense if you see it on the right hand side here. So here's my right here's my second floor slab and notice I extruded this up. Actually you know what will make this even easier? Let's do this. We'll go and make this uh, we'll, we'll uh, make it so you can actually see the surfaces a little better. All right so I've got a single zone on the bottom. I've now got a, this uh, mass. The, I've got some geometry and I've extruded it from the floor up to the middle of the, the floor there. I could go to the top, I could go to the bottom, it doesn't matter too much, but I like that you just go to the middle there, that works pretty well. So there's our first thermal zone. Now let's do our second thermal zone. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna grab box again. And here I wanna snap to the upper left corner of the box, snap to the lower right corner, and this time I'm going to extrude to the top of the insulated ceiling. So the top of the insulated ceiling there. So I've just made two quick zones, so two quick boxes, just using the box command. Now we could have done that in all sorts of different ways. We could have drawn a surface 
using the surface command and then used our gumball here clicking on this little uh, blue this little circle to extrude so we could have done it that way we could have you know built it up one surface at a time and joined them together you know there's all sorts of different ways we can sort of build geometry in Rhino but in any event we've got two nice boxes here the only other thing that I want to do with these is uh, I want to take this bottom surface and I want to move it down to this edge right here. So I want to move it down to this edge right here. So if I try and grab this and use the move command, maybe I come over here and I say, or maybe I say move vertical from here and I do that and it looks like it worked, except that if you come up, notice what happens. We moved the entire thing. So that's no good. So how do I move just this bottom surface? Um, there's a couple different ways that you can do that in Rhino. Um, you can, the easiest way is to just use the, um, uh, just use the keyboard shortcut, which is to hold Control and Shift and then click. So if you hold down Control and Shift and just click, you'll, you'll select just one object. Uh, in Rhino, this is called sub-object selection mode. And so now we've selected just this bottom surface. And now notice I can move this surface around. The rest of the object stays where it is. So again, that was uh, using the keyboard shortcut, which is control, which is holding both the control and the shift key down and then clicking with the mouse. Now there's another way to do it if you don't want to use that, which is to use the filter. So if I come over here and select filter, and I turn on sub object. So I turn on sub object mode. Now when I select, I'm selecting just one um, object. So you can turn that on and off. This again, this is in the selection filter. So if you come over here down to filter and just left click with filter, you can turn on and off what Rhino calls sub object mode. So sub object mode allows us to grab, for instance, one surface, which is part of a larger solid. In any event, I want to move this. I'm going to say M and then V. I want to move this until it aligns to the bottom edge of my floor. So again, we can go to our right view here. Notice that my, my mass aligns to the bottom edge of my floor. So this is a, um, a you know slab on grade with some frost walls here. And uh, so the bottom of our, our thermal zone is going to go down to the bottom of our floor. And the top is going to go up to the top of our insulation. Our, this is our insulated ceiling. We've got a vented attic up above. So as far as Woofie is concerned, we've got two rectangular uh, volumes. So very quickly, let's get this into Woofy. Let's, we're not going to add any more detail right now to the Rhino scene. What I want to do is move this really quickly into an actual Woofy model so that you can see the whole process. And then obviously we'll come back and add more information as we go. So how do we get this into Woofy? Well, we're going to use Grasshopper for that. We're using Grasshopper and the Honeybee PH Toolkit. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to turn on Grasshopper. So I'm going to leave this geometry in Rhino for now. We'll come back, do windows, do shading, do all the rest of it. But for now, I'm just going to uh, leave this. All right. And the very first step is for us to make a valid Honeybee model out of our geometry here. So again, there's a million ways that we can do this. I'm just going to show one uh, simple method, um, but, but don't think this is the only method for building up a Grasshopper file. Obviously, Grasshopper Rhino, hugely powerful tools. They've got tons of different ways that you can work with them. I'm just going to show one uh, simple method that has uh, been working uh, reasonably well for, the type, for a project of this sort. All right, so first of all, how do we get this geometry into Grasshopper. Um, we could reference it, but I'm going to use, I'm going to use what's uh, called a pipeline. So I'm going to, I'm going to come into my Grasshopper scene. I'm going to double click, and then I'm just going to start typing the name of the component that I'm looking for. And so when, as, as I type pipeline, notice that this geometry pipeline pops up and that's the one I want. So I'm going to drop a geometry pipeline onto the canvas. We could alternatively come up to our, where is it? It's in inputs, I think. Um, I don't, I don't know. I don't use these uh, upper things uh, nearly as often as I just just uh, start typing in whatever whatever you want. But th this does exist somewhere up in the up in the uh, toolbar here. In any event, we can use this to um, dynamically bring in data from our Rhino scene. And the way that we do that is we say, well, what layer do you want to read information from? And then, you know, what type of data do you want me to pull into Grasshopper from Rhino? Well, we our, our information here is on O1 geometry. So I'm going to come in here and just double click. And I'm going to say O1. 
underscore geometry. And the in this case, the capitals, I, I believe it is case sensitive. So I happen to write everything as all caps. And I think that does matter um, for, for Rhino here. Notice that it's saying, well, you know, I didn't get any data. So it's saying I didn't, I didn't get anything here. If we double click and we drop a panel onto the canvas um, by double click and just in, enter, um, you know, the double quotes uh, and just hit enter, that'll drop a, a, a what's called a panel onto the canvas here. And we can see that no data is coming out of our pipeline here. Uh, and that's because we haven't told it, uh, I believe, what type of data we want to get. So let's grab surfaces, so I'm gonna, or excuse me, um, B-reps, uh, geometry. So as soon as I double click on this filter here, uh, this pipeline is going to bring all of the geometry automatically into. So notice, uh, Grasshopper, notice here I've got two B-rep objects. Now, if, again, just to kind of keep things tidy, I am going to kind of standardize things here a little bit. This is just our kind of office standard. You can use whatever you like um, for your own for your own projects, of course. Uh, but we, when we're uh, referencing or pulling data in, we kind of just give it a kind of standard uh, you know, standard turn off preview Stand, standardized color so that we know that this is an input into grasshopper so this is data coming into grasshopper now what are we going to do with that data um, we need to turn that into a honeybee model and to do that of course we are going to use honeybee so i'm going to come up here to honeybee go to honeybee and i'm going to come over to honeybee and in honeybee i can create rooms from solids that's one of the components here so i'll go ahead and drop that onto the canvas all right, there we go. Now, uh, the first time that you uh, use the, the, that you put these onto your canvas, it may take a second to compile and get everything sorted. Um, but the next time, um, it should be relatively uh, quick. Um, so we drop this guy onto our canvas here, and this is a honeybee component. This is a is a, um, a straightforward honeybee component, which is used to build up a valid honeybee model. And so all we need to do is input some geometry. Notice there's inputs for all sorts of other things, but I'm going to just take my geometry and I'm going to click it into my geometry. And as soon as I do that, if I now connect my rooms output to my panel, notice that now I'm getting something called room, room one and room two. So Honeybee has taken in this geometry, this geometry, and has turned it into a valid Honeybee model. And we can visualize that by coming up to Honeybee again, going to our Visualize panel. And I can use some of these Visualize components. I'm going to say Visualize by Type, and I'm just going to feed the rooms into this Visualize by Type. And over here, notice that we're getting some color. Let me do this, actually. I'm going to come to Perspective and turn this back to Wireframe so that we don't have uh, visibility issues. And notice here that we've got some red and some yellow and some gray. Those are standard honeybee colors telling us that this is a ceiling and this is a wall and this is a floor. Uh, so honeybee has successfully read in our geometry and has turned it into what it calls a room. Now the nomenclature is a little bit funny in honeybee land. Um, this does not mean this is, is not necessarily a room the way that we might think of a room in a you know, typical residence. It's not a, a bedroom or a living room. Uh, it's really a, a zone. So it can be as big or as small as you want it to be. Um, in general, uh, it really shouldn't be any smaller than a single floor level. So you really shouldn't, uh, in most cases, have more than one floor, one, more than one story of your building uh, inside of a single room. And then you might want to break it down even more. Notice, of course, that our building here has lots of individual rooms, a den and a kitchen and a whatever else. But for the time being, we've put them all into um, uh, zones. We've lumped them together into, into zones by floor level. So as far as Honeybee is concerned, we only have two rooms. We'll come back and talk more about that as we get into it. There's lots of different ways we could do it. We can add as much detail as we want. But for now, this is the simplest way that we can model a building of this sort. So we've got geometry coming in. We turn it into a room. The next thing we should always do uh, with Honeybee is to use this solve adjacencies tool. It takes the rooms into the rooms, and all we have to do is run it. Don't really, we don't have to worry about all the rest of this stuff right now. And to run it, all we have to do is um, input, uh, it says set true. The easiest way to do that, double click and type Boolean. And this will give us a little switch, a little toggle. So we can connect that up. And then when I say double click on this, turn it to true. This will run and it'll do some, um, 
well, adjacency solving. It'll say, oh, you know, you've got a surface on zone two, which is adjacent to the surface on zone one. And so they are going to match one another in honeybee land. So it's going to do some uh, uh, inter, uh, interzonal adjacency uh, matching. So don't worry too much about what this is doing. Just know that this is an important piece of the puzzle when you're building up these honeybee models. All right, we're almost ready to send this off to Woofy. At this point, we could basically send this off to Woofy. Once we have a valid Honeybee uh, set of rooms, we could do that. But really, what we need to do is collect these rooms together into what Honeybee calls a model. So Honeybee has this language of rooms. You could think of them as zones. And the zones or rooms get collected together into what's known as a Honeybee model. And that's relatively straightforward. We're going to come up here to Honeybee, come over to create and over here you'll notice that there's a little component called HB model I'll grab that and just drop that onto the canvas notice it has all sorts of inputs the only one that we really care about is this top one where it says rooms so I'm just gonna take rooms plug in rooms and we could give it a name if we wanted to why don't we do that we'll say Ed's very whoops uh, if I could type Ed's very first model there we go name and now we are um, ready to send this off to uh, uh, Woofy at this point. To do that there's a few steps that we have to do. The first thing we need to do is flatten this so we're gonna write out this honeybee model into um, a essentially a text file so we take our so we come up here to where it says serialize and we're gonna take the model and the model is gonna get input to this uh, HB objects and then we're going to uh, be asked to, for another run where it says set to true. So here we'll give it another switch. So I double click and I'm going to input Boolean, bring up this Boolean toggle, Let me input the Boolean toggle. And um, before I set this to true, we have to give it a little bit of information. So first of all, we have to say, where do you want to save this file? So this is going to create a file on your system. It's going to create a text file, which is going to be a description of the building that we just built in Rhino. So we could save it basically anywhere. Um, let's say I'm going to say path. So again, double click. I'm just going to type path. And this gives us a file path component. File path component, we can input that where it says folder. So the save folder. And we can put that basically any, we put it basically anywhere. Let's just use our desktop. So I'm going to right click. I'm going to write, so I right click on this file path component. And I say select a directory. And again, I'm on a I'm on parallels on a Mac, so things are a little weird. Uh, but um, you know, it's hopefully relatively straightforward where you're working. Um, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say, where are we here? Is that this PC. I'm going to say desktop. Say OK. And again, my my file path might look a little weird because um, again, I'm on a Mac working in parallels. But yours should be. You can save it basically anywhere that you want. So this is where it's going to get saved. And then we should give it a name. We should give the file a name as well. We'll call this Ed's first HB JSON. So this component is going to create a type of text file known as a Honeybee JSON file. Um, JSON is a standard file type, uh, mostly used uh, on the web, although it's certainly used a lot for storing simple uh, simple sim simple files um, and, and so honeybee has a specific type of JSON they call HB JSON so that's what this that's what this component is going to create as an HB JSON file and if I just uh, double click where it says uh, false notice this will just take a second and what did it do well let's see if we um, double click bring up a panel connect it here uh, it looks like it created a new file, did it? Let's go to our desktop. And it looks like it did. There it is. So I'm on my desktop, and here's Ed's first Honeybee JSON file. Now, what is this? Just re real briefly, if we were to open this up, let's see. Um, what can we open this with that would make the most sense? We can, we can open it with just about anything. Um, Let's just open it with, do we have like a text? Uh, let's see, text, text, notepad, notepad. Oh, that looks pretty ugly, doesn't it? Well, sort of. I mean, it's all readable. Display name, Ed's very first model, identifier, face type, type, face 3D, plane. Looks like we've got some geometric information here. It looks nasty because it's, you know, just a big old file. We can fix that. 
Let me close this. One of the easy ways that we can fix this to make it a little bit more readable is to give a property to this indent input. So if I do something as simple as just put in the number two, so all I did was double click, hit the double quotes, put the number two, hit enter, and that brings up a panel with an input value. Take the number two and put it into indent. As soon as I do that, this is going to run again. If this is still set to true, I can turn this on, turn this off. And now if I come down here and I look at Ed's HBJSON, and I say open with notepad. Oh, look, now it's not much nicer, isn't it? It's sort of structured and organized, and I can see that it looks like rooms are like a list of things, and it looks like there's a bunch of stuff inside rooms. There's some geometry, there's some names, some faces, I've got some tolerance. So there's all sorts of data about the building in a structured, organized, straightforward way in this HBJSON file. So all this is is a human readable uh, text file of our building. So everything that we've done, everything that we've built up about our building is now inside of this text file. And we can use that text file to send things off to Woofy uh, Passive. So that we will do using the first of our Honeybee pH components. So, so far, everything we've done has just been honeybee. We haven't actually done any honeybee pH yet, but we're just about ready to use our very first honeybee pH component. So, so okay, so let's take a look at the honeybee pH toolbar. So I'm going to come up here to my toolbars on the top. So we've mostly been working in Honeybee so far, but I'm going to come over here to the Honeybee pH toolbar. So these are the new tools that you got as part when you downloaded and installed the Honeybee pH toolkit. There's a lot of tools here related to geometry and spaces and mechanical systems and plumbing and all sorts of other things. For now, we just need one of these. We only need one component to write everything out to our Woofy file. Now, it's not going to be a complete Woofy file. It's going to be a bunch of parts that are not there because obviously we haven't input a lot of detailed data around climate and thermal bridges and window components and, and on and on. But we will. We can build that up, but we can absolutely dump out what we have to a Woofy file relatively easily. So again, I come up here to my Honeybee BPH. I'm going to come over to where it says Honeybee PH write Woofy XML. So in this O3, I'm going to grab the one here that looks kind of like the Woofy logo and drop that onto the canvas. Now this component lo is looking for an HBJSON file to use as the source. It's asking where do you want me to save the XML file I'm going to create and, and give me a file name. So this component is going to read in one of these flattened text files describing the building. It's going to convert it into a Woofy XML file, which we can then open in Woofy Passive. So this component here is going to take in some data. So first of all, the file name. Let's give it a file name. Well, let's just give it, I guess, what should we call this? We'll call this uh, Ed's first Woofy XML. Well, not XML, S. XML. And I'll give that as a file name. So that'll be our file name. And save folder, well, why don't we just reuse? We'll save it in the same place. So I will go ahead and pass this data. This is our um, input. We should actually style this as an input, again, to kind of keep things consistent so that we kind of keep track of everything. Um, again, I like to use this kind of um, standardized coloring and styling for inputs so that we know that this is a user input. But you can, again, do whatever you want. Um, so I'm going to save it in the same place, meaning that we're going to save this to the desktop. And then we have to connect our Honeybee file. So we have this Honeybee file being generated. We'll connect that up to our Honeybee JSON file input. So this guy's basically ready to go. It is also looking for a, a toggle, a switch, to sell, tell it to go run. So it's sort of collected all the data. But until we tell it to run, it's just going to sit here doing nothing. So I'll double click. I'll type Boolean, grab another Boolean toggle. I'll input that here. And we are generating the HBJSON file. And so all I have to do is come over here, say true. This will go off and think for a second. And I can turn these off. So these are no longer writing. The, they have successfully written. And if I come down here to my desktop, uh, let's see. How do we refresh? There we go. On my desktop, I now see Ed's first Woofy XML.
I actually see two XML files. The way that this is written, we'll talk a little bit about it, but the way this is written is that it writes out the XML file and it also writes out a time stamped version, sort of a backup version, a backup copy. In any event, we have two versions of the Excel file written out to our desktop here. Now, what are these files? These are XML files. So can I open these? I bet I can open these in text edit, just like we did before. Can I do it on the... Again, everything's more complicated because I'm running on parallels, so ignore, ignore a lot of this uh, nonsense. Hopefully your system is a lot smoother than this. Um, where are we? QR this. Where's, do we not have text edit? I guess we don't. Maybe, I, maybe I'm not allowed to open that up. All right, I'll just open it up in VS Code. Um, there we go. Uh, so here we go. So this is just a, another type of text editor um, used for uh, programming. And here we have our XML file. So notice Ed's first Woofy XML file. Um, shrink this up, roll this up. And what do we have here? It, we kind of have a lot of the same stuff project data, variants, assemblies. Um, this is a lot of the same data from our HB JSON file, just in a different structure, a different format, a different organization. So what this component has done, what this component has done is it's taken this honeybee format and it's rewritten it. It's reorganized it as a woofy file. And so we now have this Woofy file sitting on our desktop. So this Woofy XML file is sitting on our desktop. And so to use it, all we need to do is open up Woofy and then open up that file. So I'll come down here to my start menu. I'm going to open up Woofy Passive. I'm going to be using Woofy Passive Free for this tutorial series just to show that we can do it all in Woofy Passive Free version. And I'll come up here to File and we'll say Open. So I'm going to say File Open. So we're just going to open up this file. This is just a Woofy file. All that we've done is create a Woofy file. So I navigate to my desktop and, hey, where's my file? Why isn't my file here? What's happening? Well, you know, as with most uh, dialogues, we can filter by file type. So down here in the lower right, by default, you're going to be looking at w MWP uh, Woofy files. But we can also look at these XML files. So if we just select and or just change our filter to look at XML files, all of a sudden our XML files pop up. So notice they are XML documents, and we've got our XML files here. And these are the identical at this point, so you can select either one. I'll just select the timestamped one there, and I'll hit open. Let's go off and think for a second. Say yes, and there we go. There is our project in Woofy. Sort of. Why does it look? so weird. It looks like it's missing the top. Well, let me just change this to pass fast verification. By default, what this tool is going to do is it's going to build two cases, two individual cases. So by default, each honeybee room becomes a separate case in Woofy land. Now, we can adjust that. We can merge them together. We will go over all of that. We have tools to do all that. It's really easy. Um, but by default, what this tool is going to do is it's going to take each honeybee room, and it's going to create a separate case. So remember, in Woofy terminology, we have these cases. Notice I've got the lower floor, and then I've got the upper floor. Um, and they're just turning on and off in the, in the view window down there. Now, again, we'll talk about how we reorganize that, manage that, put them back together, uh, what all this is, and then, of course, how we're going to add in all the other information around things like windows and shading and mechanical systems. We'll sort of dive into that as we get into the next phases. But at this point, let me go ahead and close this. Well, you could, if you wanted to, you know, save this. Um, you save it as a, you know, a real Woofy, Woofy file instead of an XML file. Probably a good idea. The Woofy files are going to open and run a lot faster than the XML files. So once the data is in here to Woofy, you should probably save it as a, a, an MWP file for, you know, future working or, or that kind of thing. But you certainly don't have to. Um, and we have our, our Woofy file now, so I can just close this. I'll just, I'm not going to save it for now, say no. Um, and now we have our, our working um, Honeybee pH pipeline. So um, this is all it takes to build a really quick um, two zone or two thermal zone, two Honeybee room uh, 
uh, project and then dump it out to Woofy Passive really quickly. So hopefully that is all working for you. I hope you don't have any issues or run into any errors or any trouble with any of those sequences. You definitely want to make sure that this much is working properly before we get into more detail around all the other aspects of a building like this. So make sure this is working. If you have any trouble at all, reach out to us through the website. Uh, again, passivehousetools.com. Go to the Honeybee PH website and you'll find a contact page there with some help and, and all sorts of other information. So if you do run into any issues, feel free to uh, drop us a line. You can also go to the Ladybug Tools forum as well, which is another great place to ask for, ask for help, ask the community for help, get all sorts of um, assistance uh, there. So I think we should leave it at that. Um, this video has already gone on long enough, um, but I hope that I'll see you back in future videos as we dive into all the other aspects of building out a complete Woofy Passive model using the Honeybee PH Toolkit.